This week on King's TV News. Monkeys and dinosaurs for March break. African dance teachers reconnect with Nova Scotia. And picking up the pieces, reopening Dartmouth's Heritage Museum. Hi, welcome to King's TV News, a production by third-year journalism students at the University of King's College. I'm Jennifer Lee. And I'm John Sandham. In our top story this week, Dartmouth Heritage Museum is back in business. When budget problems closed it down this winter, staff members weren't sure if it would ever open again. Rowan Morrissey explains how they survived, at least for now. The Dartmouth Heritage Museum is coming out of hibernation after two harsh winter months. Bonnie Elliott, the executive director, is happy to be up and running again and explains that the shutdown may have saved the museum. For a little while, they weren't sure if they would ever open again. But the money they saved in the two months the museum was closed was enough to get them back on their feet until the end of their fiscal year on March 31st. They will meet with the city to talk about the budget for the upcoming year at the end of March. Well, I'm just excited that we're, uh, we've reopened that we're getting research requests, that we're getting visitors. There is still lots to be done. Items in storage are just as deeply buried as the museum's financial situation, and Elliot wants to bring as much history to the community as possible. David Jones, an archaeology graduate from St. Mary's, works away at a box of fragments of glass, pottery, and china in the basement. None of the staff even knew this box of pieces existed until a few days ago when it was pulled from storage. Jones explains that some of the pieces came directly from the grounds of the Evergreen and Quaker houses, but most of them were found scattered around the HRM. When you're from Dartmouth, when you're from the area where you're um, working with this collection, you know, maybe my ancestors tossed this out in the garbage. Maybe there's a family connection. Maybe there isn't, but it just gives you that uh, sense of wonder. So it's, it's really fun. There's still lots more research to be done, but Jones hopes that they can make an exhibit with the pieces soon. Museums really reflect on civic pride. Um, they have, a, they really start a conversation about where people come from and where we are now. And they're a wonderful meeting place um, around that conversation. This museum stands in the heart of Dartmouth as a reminder of the past. Putting all the pieces together to make it work may be a challenge, but Elliot Jones and the rest of the staff are excited to keep working. For The Signal, I'm Rowan Morrissey. A local bar has taken unusual measures to make it through the tough winter months, and the strategy seems to be working. Rachel Collier has the story. East Coasters love the Carlton Bar and Grills, live music performances and atmosphere. The bar's owner, Mike Campbell, says that business has been slower than usual this winter. Campbell blames the massive Nova Center's construction site for the slow traffic at his bar. To make it through the lag in business, Campbell set up a crowdfunding site and campaign. Loyal bar patrons and supporters can use the site to donate to the bar until Nova Center's construction is finished. And Rachel Collier joins me now. Rachel, you spoke with the Carlton's owner on the phone. How did he feel the crowdfunding campaign went? Yeah, Mike Campbell thought that the crowdfunding campaign went really well. He set a goal to make $5,000 a month in donations, and right now he's set up to get about 4000 And he also received some one-off donations. Tell me about those. Yeah, so he received a few one-off donations. One, for example, was from Stanfest. They donated to the campaign because they feel as if bars like the Carlton are really beneficial to the Atlantic music industry and even the Canadian music industry as a whole. So where does Campbell go from here with this crowdfunding campaign? From here, he doesn't plan on pushing the campaign unless the need arises. He's really just looking forward to when the Nova Center is finished so he can get back to business. Thank you, Rachel. It's March break, the biggest week of the year at the Museum of Natural History. From dinosaurs to tarantulas, the museum gives kids a chance to learn, even on vacation. 
Terry Boats gets up close and personal with the critters. It isn't a lie. Dinosaurs and monkeys in the same place. While the dinosaurs stand strong and silent, the monkeys are busy entertaining. Little Ray's Reptile Zoo is a traveling zoo experience in Nova Scotia. Its aim is to teach children and the young at heart about animals not familiar to them. Most of the young kids are brave enough to interact with the creepy crawlies. Many of the parents squirm away from the opportunity. <laughs> no, it's bad. I know. Why can't I do this? Some of the animals calling the museum their home this week are Sven, the seven foot python, Lennon, Kirk, and Rory, the squirrel monkeys and Ruby, the seven-month-old tortoise. Little Rays comes to the museum once a year during March break and sees hundreds of curious people willing to learn. Ugly food is coming to a store near you. This means you may be buying food with a few bumps or bruises at grocery stores, but you'll be saving a few cents in the process. Jennifer checked it out. Perfect tomatoes like these are not what you normally see in nature. The flawless fruits and vegetables in grocery stores isn't always what's grown. And the guys at Superstore are expanding their naturally imperfect line of food. The question is, would you still eat it? The big expansion of ugly food is happening out west for now, but depending on how it goes, we may see it around here. For The Signal, I'm Jennifer Lee. Now for a pie you can't eat. March 14th, or 3.14, is Pie Day. It's a big joke with the math crowd. So, engineering students at St. Mary's University found a way to celebrate. Francesca Handy has the story. More than 200 people signed up for an event at the St. Mary's Field Monday, but it wasn't for a football game. St. Mary's engineering students gathered to break the world record for the largest human pie symbol. Pi is a magic number that helps to measure a circle with decimal places that go on forever. People lined up to take photos with their favorite symbol. Organizer Sam Higgins says that the event is a great way for busy students to get outside and have some fun. Students did take a break from their studies for the outdoor party. People tried to memorize the equation number to win some real pie. The Engineering Society made the symbol but didn't break the record. Organizers say that they can't wait for next pie day so that they can give it another shot. My name's Francesca and you're listening to The Signal. Grafton Street was alive with the sound of drums last weekend. The drums were a part of an African dance class, and John sat down with the instructors to talk about the style of dance and their connection to Nova Scotia.
Guinean dancers Mohamed and Marielle de Anto were in Halifax to teach an African dance workshop on Saturday. Mohamed was born in Guinea and has been dancing professionally since the age of 15. I caught up with them after the class to talk about what makes their style of instruction so unique. What was interesting about this dance to me is that there's very little instruction, very little voice instruction. It's, and, and you did say at one point that the people shouldn't think too much about the dance, they should just feel the beat. Yes. Can, you, can you talk about why that's important? Because anything you want to learn, you have to feel and courage. That was every time I teach dance class, I tell people, don't be hurry, take your time and feel a bit, because if you feel a bit, it's going to help you, your dance, because you don't have to think too much. Dance don't like that. Don't have to do your best. Yeah. Marielle is originally from Nova Scotia and was first introduced to Guinean He's dance in shit. Halifax. Soon after graduating NASCAD and moving to British Columbia, she decided to go to Guinea to learn from the source. Life changed from there. So I went to Africa for three months to study dance. That's where I met Mohammed, my now fu like my future husband, I guess. And then um, he came to Canada. Then we started our own company. He started teaching, and I started helping him teach. And um, we started a performance troupe. And so now we've been there. Well, I've been in, Vic in Victoria ten years, and it would be eight years for him. So. Yeah. So I heard you talking earlier about potentially future plans moving back to Halifax. Yes, well now we've started a family, so we have a little 10-month-old, um, and so and all my family is still here. My sister's in Halifax, my parents are um, on the French Shore in Clare, and so it's, yeah, we've been talking about, we love coming back to, east, to the East Coast, and, and so now with the baby, it just kind of puts it all in perspective, and it's like, yeah, it's nice to have family around, right? So, and if we do that, then yeah, we'd love to, to start teaching here as well, so. Absolutely, yeah. and obviously with this turnout today, there's quite a bit of interest. They already have classes here on Fridays. That's right. So. Yeah, yeah, and it's awesome because um, I guess 10 years ago, they, they had those Friday night classes. Like, it's been really steady for the last 10 years, and so it's like you come to Halifax, even 10 years later, you know Friday night, there's going to be a dance class, and so that's, that's nice. The two return to BC at the end of the month, but for how long is anyone's best guess, even theirs? For Kings TV News, I'm John Sandler. It's a chance for beer drinkers to drink, creatively. Paint Night allows you to go to a bar, eat, drink, and learn how to paint all at once. Megan Fraser has the story. That's it for this week. We'll be back in two weeks with more stories from around Halifax. I'm John Sandom. And I'm Jennifer Lee. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of King's TV News.